I want to bring in William uh, Cohen. He's a former investment banker, a best-selling author, a special correspondent at Vanity Fair. He also has a new book out called Four Friends, which examines the lives of four men uh, from an elite boarding school who all died early. And Bill joins us now. Uh, we got to just get your take on what's happening right now. I mean, stocks having their worst day of the year. And it's really this complete 180 from last Monday when we were having a debate about whether the economy was too strong for the Fed to cut rates. And now I can't count how many times I heard the word recession today. Do you think that we are um, at some sort of inflection point right now? Well, you know, I think the first thing is it depends if Andy, who is so wise, is, <laughs> is right, that this is sort of a, some sort of long-term rejection of globalism. Uh, if, if that's the case, then this probably isn't a blip. Uh, if, in fact, it's uh, just a reset about uh, an, an interregnum about globalism, then I think this is a blip. And if it is a blip, I think it's a healthy one. I, I think, you know, Donald Trump has been pumping up stocks for the last two and a half years. He's been pumping up the bond market for the last two and a half years. I think that is all very, very bad. Uh, and I see these big sell-offs and corrections uh, in the stock market is very healthy. Uh, there should be, and there hasn't been, and there, there was uh, late last year, uh, a big starting of a sell-off as there should have been in the bond market. But now, of course, everybody's running to safety and driving uh, down bond yields to absurd levels. So uh, on the stock market, I see this very healthy. In the bond market, uh, I continue to be incredibly worried about what's going on in the bond market. Well, and I guess to that point on, on the bond market, you know, the traditional metrics would say it is pointing to a recession, right? We have a pretty steep inversion right now um, on the yield curve. That has traditionally said there's going to be a recession uh, within the next year. Just based on the conversations that you're having, the concerns that you hear uh, from some of your sources, does it seem like a recession is something more and more folks are hunkering down for right now? You know, uh I, you know, I, I'm like trying to reconcile what I hear, you know, out of Washington with how this is the greatest economy ever. And then the Fed cutting interest rates, 25 basis points after a prolonged period of the lowest interest rates in our history. I, I don't believe that we are in a recessionary mode. But when the Fed cuts <laughs> interest rates, when the, when the economy is going well and we're being told it's going well, then maybe everybody's thinking maybe Jay Powell knows something that the rest of us don't. I don't think Jay Powell knows anything that the rest of us don't, uh, although he knows a lot of things that, that I don't know. Uh, but I think what he's doing is he's in a, between a rock and a hard place, as you were saying. He has to, he's getting pressure from uh, the president of the United States, which is sort of standard if you're the Fed chairman. But he was also getting pressure from the market, which expected this rate cut and wanted it. And then it got it, and the market is crapped out. So, I mean, it's be careful what you wish for. Now people are thinking, well, maybe there is a recession on the way. I, I just think that the worst thing that the Fed could have done, which is what they did, which was lower the, ba to basis, the interest rate by 25 basis point when it was not necessary, what should be happening is interest rates should be rising to compensate for the risk that bondholders and investors have been taking in the bond market that they have not been getting compensated for for 10 years now. Right, right. Hey, Bill, um, it's summertime, you know, people are off at the beach, but, you know, the bankers get together anyway, you, and I know you know that, you chat with these people. And I'm just wondering, you know, what are, what are people saying this summer, the people that you talk to, in terms of what's going on in Washington and the economy and the stock market right now? Are people happy, sad, scared, glad? Look, I think people are, are generally happy about the stock market because the stocks have basically never been higher, higher notwithstanding today. Uh, earnings are, are higher thanks to the big tax cut, which is good for their clients, which is good for investment banking business, which is good for Wall Street, which is good for M&A. So all of that is good. Uh, I think that there is a general concern among the people that I talk to about the increasing incompetence of the White House. I think, the, uh, to say nothing of the intransigence uh, 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 of Congress, but I think that they don't understand, people on Wall Street don't understand what Trump is doing with these trade wars. He doesn't think, they don't think Trump understands 
what he's doing. He has been unable to articulate why he's picked a trade fight with China and why he thinks he can win, even though he's clearly uh, been losing lately. Uh, you know, his advisors are unable to articulate why he's picking this big trade fight with China. It makes no sense. So from a Wall Street banker and executive perspective, it's what the heck is going on with this guy. He seems totally incompetent, not up for the job in any way, uh, shape or form, although they did like the tax cut because it helps their clients, which means more investment banking business. But they generally are getting increasingly concerned about the level of incompetence coming out of the White House. So getting increasingly concerned, let's spin it forward because we have an election that um, is coming soon. Uh, from the people that you're talking to, do they seem to be coalescing around any candidates out there? I mean, you look at this debate stage, it, it, it's so many of them. Are you hearing uh, any names more than others uh, on Wall Street when it comes to somebody they think can do a good job uh, with the economy? Yes. I mean, you've got to uh, appreciate, of course, Wall Street people uh, are by and large Democrats. I know that may be hard to believe. Uh, maybe at the very top, they're Republicans, but by and large, the rank and file are Democrats uh, and they're centrist Democrats. So that immediately cuts out Bernie and Elizabeth Warren and that whole left wing. So there's no support uh, on Wall Street from the, for them. Uh, that leaves the centrist candidates. Uh, I think, you know, at the moment, they are happy, relatively speaking, with Biden or Kamala Harris, some centrist candidate, maybe a Michael Bennett, who can who can rise above the fray and not be too extreme and restore some sort of confidence to uh, to the markets and sanity to Washington uh, without being on the extreme either way. I think right now between Trump is one extreme and Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are another extreme and Wall Street does not like extremes. Uh, William Cohen, uh, thank you for joining us.